The only thing that is worse than failing to become pregnant is finally getting pregnant and then having your doctor tell you that your pregnancy is non-viable. If you are not sure if your pregnancy is non-viable, watch this early miscarriage playlist to learn how doctors use blood tests and ultrasounds to diagnose a woman who will have a miscarriage. What are your options for dealing with a non-viable pregnancy? Today on Infertility TV, I will discuss the options and the disadvantages and advantages of each. Stay tuned. The options that I will talk about today are for women who have a pregnancy that is known to be in the uterus. If the pregnancy is located outside of the uterus, which is called an ectopic pregnancy, different treatments are needed. Watch this playlist for information about diagnosing and treating ectopic pregnancies. So what are your options for dealing with a non-viable pregnancy? Option number one is to do nothing. Doctors refer to this as expectant management. With this option, you are just hoping that your body will cause the pregnancy tissue to be expelled from your uterus on its own. One advantage of this method is that it doesn't necessarily require any assistance from a doctor. However, if a pregnancy has not passed on its own after some period of time, it could be helpful to have your doctor monitor what is going on by looking at HCG blood tests and ultrasound. Another advantage is that this is inexpensive and it is the least invasive method. There are some disadvantages also. First is uncertainty. Not all non-viable pregnancies will pass on their own. And if they do, there is no way to predict when it will happen. It could happen in days or weeks, during the day or in the middle of the night. Second, a miscarriage can be a little scary. When the pregnancy tissue starts to pass, you will have vaginal bleeding and cramping. It can be scary if the bleeding is heavy or the cramps are severe. You should discuss with your doctor at what point she would recommend that you seek medical care. Third, there are times when only part of the pregnancy tissue will be expelled. This may result in prolonged bleeding and cramping. In some cases, it may eventually require some intervention from your doctor, which kind of stinks if that is something that you were trying to avoid. The fourth disadvantage is that passing the pregnancy tissue on your own usually means that your doctor will not be able to do testing on the pregnancy tissue to look for the cause of the miscarriage. Option number two is surgical removal of the pregnancy tissue. The most common procedure for doing this is called a D and C, which stands for dilation and curatage. Dilation or stretching open the cervical canal is necessary because the cervical canal is usually too small to put any instruments inside the uterus. Curatage means scraping or suctioning the contents of the uterus. Advantages of having a DNC are those that reverse the disadvantages of the let it pass on its own approach. First is predictability. The DNC will be scheduled with your doctor at a specific time that you will choose with your doctor. By suctioning the tissue from the uterus, the chances of having leftover tissue remaining is lower and any tissue obtained can be examined to learn the cause of the miscarriage. A DNC, however, is more invasive. It means having to go to the hospital or surgical center for a procedure. A DNC is uncomfortable. It will typically be performed under anesthesia. Anesthesia medications can sometimes cause side effects like nausea. And if you are in poor health, having anesthesia may be riskier for you. Many people choose to do a DNC in order to do chromosome testing of the tissue. One problem that can arise after a DNC occurs because the procedure removes the uterine tissue along with the fetal tissue. This can lead to an incorrect result on the chromosome analysis. One way to reduce this problem is to first perform a hysteroscopy. This allows the doctor to see the pregnancy gestational sac in the uterus and precisely remove fetal tissue first which can be sent for analysis. Afterwards, the remainder of the tissue can be suctioned out. Option number three is medication. There are a few different kinds of medication that your doctor can choose from. One medication called methotrexate interferes with the cells growing in the uterus. The second type called mifepristone blocks progesterone and the third type called mesoprostol causes the uterus to contract and expel the tissue. The advantages of this approach are that it is less invasive than the surgical procedure. The disadvantages are similar to letting a pregnancy pass on its own. 
Each option has its pros and cons. There isn't an absolute correct answer for everybody. We recommend that you discuss these options with your doctor to come up with the right answer for you. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.